What's going on guys? Welcome back and thanks for joining me for another video. Today I'm going to show you guys exactly how to tap into a 12 volt switch power source but specifically through the rear fuse panel and in order to do so we need to use a fuse tap. So how this works is it's exactly the same as connecting your positive cable except instead of tapping into a wire you simply connect your positive to this fuse tap and then plug it into the fuse panel. Now I'm going to give you a, a better description of it later, but I just wanted to tell you that's how it works. Also, in order to test for the 12 volt switch power source, this is how I do it. So basically, I use a positive and negative cable. Now, if you don't have testing cables, you can simply use any positive and negative cable. As long as you touch the positive and negative of your power source and the positive and negative of the source you're using to test it. In this case, I'm using a light bulb or you can use an LED light like I am. And I have the positive and negative connected to it. And then I have the positive and negative of the other side, which I will ground to the car. And then I'll touch the fuses with this side. And that's basically it. That's how easy it is to test for a 12 volt power source. You're just making sure that you don't have power when the car's off. And then when the car is on, you do have power. Which brings me to my next point. To put it simply, a 12 volt switch power source is basically Whenever you turn on, the, turn on the ignition to your car, you will have power to that device that you're connecting. And when you turn off the car, you will no longer have power. It will cut the power to that device. And that's why it's important to have a 12 volt switch power source. Because the last thing you want to do is drain out your battery by connecting it directly to the battery. Whether you use an on and off switch, you're still going to drain out power. And the main important thing is that you do not drain the battery out because the last thing you want is to be out somewhere, have a dash cam connected to a 12 volt constant power source. And then when you go to start your car, it doesn't start. And also, you know, with most dash cams, it is a good idea to have it running 24 seven. But in many cases, most people, including myself, prefer to have the dash cam running when you're in the car rather than have it running when you're out of the car. The reason why I like to tap into the rear fuse panel rather than tapping into wires, I truly believe that you should never ever tap into factory wires or cut factory wires for that matter. Over time, that connection can become really loose through wear and tear, vibration and heat. And therefore, one day it can actually disconnect and causing a short. And that's what you don't want. And with that said, it's really important that when it comes to tapping into fuses or cutting wires that you do not tap into anything that is related to anything critical that is related to the safety of the car and in order to make the car function correctly. An example is the SRS airbag sensors and also the ESP device, the transmission, the automatic transmission and even things like fuel pumps and something that's connected to the instrument cluster or any other airbag sensors. It's really important that you do not tap into that because if you do, you have a chance of throwing errors. And worst of all, if for some reason that connection becomes loose, you're no longer going to have that secure connection. And if you tapped into something that is critical, like an airbag, then you have a chance that maybe the airbag will go off or it will throw an airbag code. For instance, with the W204, these are the fuses that you should stay away from. The ABS, the ASR, the BAS, ESP, airbag, the anti-theft, automatic transmission fuse, the fuel pump fuse. Now, some I have seen people connect power source to the fuel pump fuse, but personally for me, I wouldn't do that. Also, anything related to the ignition lock and pre-safe safety system and the starter motor and also the steering lock. All these things that you should never tap into. You don't want that connection to become loose and then throw an error or cause an error with the car. And, you know, it could actually just stop the car from working just because that connection has become loose. But in saying that also, if you do end up cutting a factory wire because it's the only option you have, I strongly recommend that you that you solder the connection and make sure that you solder it properly and have a really, really secure, strong connection. Because the last thing you want is to make a dodgy connection and then because you didn't do a good job, it disconnects and then causes the same malfunction or fault code or whatever the case may be. It just disconnects and it's just a pain in the ass for you to get to again and reconnect it all over again. So if you do decide to cut a factory wire, just remember that 
make sure you solder it because that's probably the best way to do it. Apart from using a fuse tap like I'm doing today, due to the fact that a fuse tap is an extremely secure connection for it plugs into the fuse and piggybacks off it so that all you have to do is replace the fuse in the fuse box with this device, this piggyback fuse tap, and then the device you're using will then use the top fuse panel. Okay guys, well, now that we've gone through all of that, let me show you exactly how to test for that 12 volt switched power, and I'll show you exactly which fuses you can use and which ones you can't. Now let's get straight into it. So now in order to test for 12 volt switched power, at the moment, the car is turned off. So we're going to touch some fuses and see if there is any power while the car's off. First things first, ground your connection. That's a grounding point right here. You'll see a bolt and brown cables that actually connect to it. So it's actually a really good idea to use a grounding point that the, car, that the manufacturers have already used because you know that way it's actually a really good and solid grounding point. Okay, and getting back to it, make sure you've got a positive and negative touched to your, uh, connected to your light source. And now, Watch, watch the uh, LED light as I touch fuses. Okay, so here we go. The first fuse is number 37. With the car off, we can see there is no power. Okay, now we go with this fuse here. As you can see, there's power right there. Next fuse, there's also power there. Next fuse, there's also power there. Next fuse, power there. Okay, so we know that Number 37 is definitely a fuse we can use. And now I know this one for sure is the cigarette lighter, number 71. So there's no power for 71 also. Okay, so after touching the fuses that I know we can use, it seems the only fuses that we can use so far are 37 and 71. 37 is actually the, the neck probe, so I think it's uh, to adjust the, the neck. but. I know that that's fine, you can use that, and 71. Now I'm going to turn the ignition on, and we'll see if, if it has power then. Now with the ignition on, I'm going to touch 37 again. And as you can see right there, you have power. So that's definitely a fuse you can use, and it's, a, it's actually just a 5 amp fuse. So it's actually a very low drawing current fuse. So like I said before, when you're using a fuse tap, make sure that the fuse that you're using is less or equal to than the fuse that you're replacing. It's very important. The last thing you want to do is use a fuse that has higher amperage. So for instance, if you're replacing a five amp fuse, do not use amp a fuse that is higher than five amps. Also, here's the cigarette lighter fuse, number 71. And as you can see, there is power as well. So for sure, you can definitely use number 37, which is a five amp fuse, and number 71, which is the cigarette lighter fuse. Now, I also just wanted to show you two fuses that I have discovered that I can use and I have been using this whole time for my projects. Now, this fuse here is just simply connected to a cigarette lighter port that I've installed on my amp rack just in case I need power for anything. Like if I go on a trip and I have a uh, esky in the back that is a refrigerator as well, then I can simply plug in a cigarette lighter, plug it into the cigarette lighter port and allow it to cool. It's actually fuse number 72. This one right here. So all I do is connect it to the fuse tap and the best thing is there's no fuse in it so it's an empty fuse slot. That way you know you can actually use it. Now when you're using a fuse tap and you have an empty fuse slot you don't have to put anything in the lower part because the lower panel is actually used for the fuse that you're replacing. For instance plug this in there and that 15 amp fuse would then go into the lower part of this fuse tap. and the five amp, the whatever amperage fuse I'm using to power my device will then go in the top. But because there is, it's an empty fuse slot, all you need is a fuse in the top slot and then you can simply plug it in and you can just use it like a normal fuse. Now, if you're wondering why that works, it's because the fuse panel actually has a whole positive range. So when you plug your fuse in, it, it, it makes connection with the positive panel, therefore giving you power. Now that's the easiest way for me to explain it. I'm not a professional, but through trial and error and testing, I've discovered that that is definitely the case and I can definitely use it. So that's why I can actually use this fuse. Also, through my testing, I've also found out right here, 
above number 70, above number 80. It's actually a one-sided fuse, so I'll actually give you a closer look in a second. But I've also discovered that you can actually use this empty fuse slot above number 80. And if you, have to, if you actually take a look, when I plug in my fuse, you can see that my cigarette lighter port here is connected and my line output converter is also got power as soon as I plug it in. Now, this is all while the car is running, guys. So if I pull it out straight away, my cigarette lighter port here disconnects and my line output converter no longer has power. Same with this fuse here. If I pull it out, my cigarette lighter, my uh, triple cigarette lighter port over there turns off. And as soon as I plug it back in, it turns back on. And this is all while the car's running. It's also another way you can test it without having to worry about blowing anything. Just remember that you also want to make sure that you're not going to blow any fuses. And there you have it. That's how easy it is to test for power. And also to tap into a fuse. Now, right here, I haven't actually tapped into any. All I've done is used two empty fuse slots and made it work to my, to my liking. But like I said, if you want to tap into a fuse, all you have to do is make sure that you test the fuse first. And after you know that the fuse works, use the fuse tap, connect your positive to it. And then the fuse that you're replacing will then go into the bottom of the fuse tap. And the fuse that you want for the power source, that you're, for the device that you're using, will then go into the top panel and that's all it is that's why i strongly recommend to use a fuse tap because it's a very secure connection it plugs directly into the fuse box and makes that strong connection rather than tapping into a, a cable or a wire unless of course you're soldering but rather than tapping into a wire where you can actually make it a really weak connection over time due to the factors that i mentioned before such as you know through vibration heat and just wear and tear over time that connection can become loose and therefore disconnecting and then not giving you a connection and giving you a fault now i'm just going to give you guys a closer look and show you exactly how what numbers they are i also wanted to show you that even though these are all empty fuse slots now, now that the ignition is off, this is actually connected to this cigarette lighter port right here. This is how I found out I could use an empty fuse slot. Even though it only has a fuse for one side, one blade, you can still use it this way. And this is how I connected it. Now, I know it doesn't look like the best connection, but I tell you what, it definitely works and it's actually very secure. Okay, so for a whole year I've used it and I haven't had one issue. Okay, so now I'm just going to plug it in here. And as you can see straight away, I get power. This little white plug here is actually my LED light up here that I can turn off with a switch over here. And as you can see, it turns off. And then I press it again and I get lighting. So as you can see, even though that's an empty fuse slot, it actually provides 12 volt constant power. But I actually use number three from the one here. I actually use three above, which doesn't have a number. As you can see, it goes 74, 80. And then there's no number but when I plug it in as you can see there's no power but as soon as I turn on the ignition I get power to it immediately and just to show you that all these other empty fuse slots also have power as you can see there you go the light comes on again I'll move it up one more and as you can see again there's 12 volt power so you know it's actually amazing that all these empty fuse slots have 12 volt constant power in them even though there's no fuses in them and this is how i actually discovered that i could use it that's all it is i've run the the remote line for the line output converter and i've also run the dash cam and the cigarette lighter right there and that's all there is guys that's how i've used my fuse at the back so if you want to use it the same way i'm telling you now i've used this setup for almost a year and I haven't experienced one problem at all and I just wanted to show you quickly that this is my capacitor this is how I've connected my amp as you can see I just have it over the edges I actually have the cabling run here I'm actually going to tidy it up more but you actually can't see this cabling once I close it I'll show you there we go and as you can see all the cables are hidden And that's the capacitor there that I use. Just in case I blast my music too loud, I needed a capacitor just in case when the bass hits too hard, 
the amp can then draw the power from the capacitor and give it that extra oomph and there you have it guys see now with the car running you can see that my voltage is now 14.9 almost 15 so I can tell there that there's nothing wrong with my battery which is also why I wanted to install a voltmeter because even though it says 14.9 now here the capacitor actually shows 15.7.8 now I'm not sure why the capacitor is a whole voltage higher but it doesn't bother me as long as it works like I said I'm not a professional electrician so I'm not sure about these things I simply teach myself through trial and error and there you have it guys how to test for 12 volt power making sure that it works with the car on and off and that's it simple as that guys there you go well there you have it guys how to find 12 volt switched power with at home simple everyday tools like a testing cable and also which fuses you can use exactly which are number 37 71 72 which is an empty fuse slot and also number the one above number 80 which is also an, an empty fuse slot but also remember that if you don't take if you don't want to take my word for it do some more research ask around ask mercedes and if you actually have a lot more options in your car then maybe those few slots are actually taken up but in my case they're not taken up so i can use them so yeah until next time guys if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if not well i hope you enjoyed it and if there's anything i missed if there's anything you want to tell me please comment below and as always thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. This is Mike with Mikey's Vlogs, signing off.